Welcome to another episode of Possession Era Podcast. I'm your host, Robbie. Summer, summer, summertime. Simpson with my boy Pat. Way down yonder at that Uchi Hellman. Uh, shout out to wow. the TGT, the Grueling Truth, for hosting our podcast. Um, if you like our intro, love our outro. Check out our boy Flawed Souls, killing it. And we've got one more guy showing up late. Who's there? It's, it's Jeeves in the flesh. What's up? Not a whole lot, Jeeves. Where have you been? Oh, silent treatment. Okay. I thought the All Star game was super radical. What blew you away? You're right, Jeeves. It was it was pretty radical, but a uh, few highlights and far in between. Steph Curry's bounce alley oop to Giannis, which was probably meant for Joel and B, was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, he got up so so high, he was looking down into into the netting, into the mesh, as you will. I will. Um, you know, other than that, it was it was not that. All that exciting, especially after 2016, uh, or even last year's um, All Star Game, it was thrilling. While this one, you know, not not too much for me. How about you, Rob? Um, yeah, I don't know. When you said Steph, the first thing that popped in my mind was his four point play when Clay fouled yeah. him at the three point, and like Clay was just like, "Are you kidding me?" And he even thought like he was interviewed after, and he he was just like, "So this is what we do to other teams." That's what Reggie was saying. <laughs> you know, too, like though. this is what they literally do to other teams. It's true. They don't miss shots even when they're fouled. Um, Team LeBron ended up winning one seventy eight to one sixty four. They trailed by thirteen and a half. KD here in MVP honors with thirty one and seven. Giannis definitely would have had it if he ended up winning. He had thirty eight and eleven, and him and Middleton combined for his team's first twenty eight of fifty three points in the first quarter. Bucks power. Bucks power. They buck. <laughs> um, some interesting facts, though. I mean, like LeBron started his fifteenth consecutive All Star game. He's played sixteen seasons, so people are like, "Oh, he missed one," but it was his rookie campaign. He should have had it. He would have been the last vote for sure, but they put Paul Pearson instead, kind of like, a, okay, like this guy's been around doing it. LeBron was the reason for the Rising Stars game because the people wanted LeBron, and you give the people what they you want. You give the people what they want. They're they're the ones paying paying your taxes. Um, speaking of LeBron, though, he now holds the record for most points ever in an All Star game. So suck it, Kobe. Suck it, Shaq. <laughs> suck it, MJ. 362 points. Hey, you leave him alone. Unless MJ's coming back to compete in an All-Star he game. He might. He won't. He's down two 30-foot shots in the same game. I thought that was kind that of crazy. Was... Like, this guy's seven foot and can stroke it from three. And he was even telling people, that's what I do, baby. Yeah, well, that's, that's what, what I, I do. do. And, like, the guy's Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Like, cool spe- speaks a little German. Yeah, that's... Major cool points out the window. That's a cool point. Speaking of cool points, there was 168 three-pointers shot in the game. I think they hit 62 of those... Did you have a highlight from the game? It was that Steph to Giannis dunk. That was that was my ultimate. Highlight. That was the second best alley oop of the of the entire I knew weekend. You'd say this, um, D Wade to LeBron all day. That that's what I needed. That's that's what people went and paid to see. And I love how D Wade even had to you know well, look he, back at it. Well, well that's the thing. Like back at it. when he threw it up in Miami, where like that iconic picture was taken, like. He knew it was going in, and he knew he was going to throw LeBron another 200 alley-oops. But, like, this one he knew was going to be the last alley-oop he's going to throw to I LeBron. I kind of wish, though, he recreated it with the arms out and everything. That would have been... you got to watch like it, him. though, man. Yeah, you do. What are your thoughts concerning the skills competition? Uh, it was a surprising competition. Trey Young went out and tried so hard to get that win. And Luca looked like he wasn't very interested in the competition at all. He just wanted to put on a jersey. Uh, and finally, Jason Tatum, the winner, uh, wins with a half-court chuck and just banks it home for the trophy. Uh, I mean, it was kind of entertaining. Uh, and gets another trophy for a shelf. Uh, doesn't really mean much more than that, though. How about what did you think, Rob? Um, yeah, shout out to Jason Tatum. He did hit that shot from half-court. I had a couple problems with it, though. Trey Young. He almost won it, even though in the quarterfinals he didn't do the hoop. That really, really, really bothered me. Which you should have to. You have to hit it. Just because you miss it three times doesn't mean that you get a pass on it. Like, well, sorry. Like, what the, what, why wouldn't a guy just try to chuck three as fast as he could and, and get That's going. exactly what I would have done. So I, the fact that he beat De'Aaron Fox I thought was pretty crappy. And then I forget, I think he played... Oh, who did he compete against? It was Jokic, I think, and he beat Jokic. And then this guy's almost going to win the win the entire t- competition, and 
like foul. Like you know, like yeah. you can't be doing that. Luca giving zero effort really, really, zero really upset effort. me. Like I thought he was going to go in there and win it. I thought he was going to play with a chip on his shoulder, like go out there to get a trophy. But like he gave zero effort. Like he dogged it the entire time. It wasn't fair to the fans. It wasn't fair. The only person it was fair to was really Mark Cuban, who might have been worried that he was going to try really hard and get hurt. Yeah. Um, but it's super not fair to the fans. You got to think of all of the people who are fans this season of the NBA. Everyone loves Luca. All these guys Everyone. overseas, they're all Luca fans right now. Like, oh, yeah. He is making the NBA so much money, and it just would have been so disappointing, especially if like you're up in Latvia or somewhere, and like you're watching at 3 a.m. You got up to watch Luca just walk on the court. Like That's not okay. The NBA expects more than that, and he needs to remember that it was an invite, not a selection. So like he didn't make the All-Star game, so he didn't need to be in Charlotte this weekend. He was invited. The NBA was like, hey, we want you there. Please come. Yeah. It was pretty crappy, in my opinion. I really, really, really didn't like it. I thought the slam dunk competition was a bit blah. What do you think? It was a bit blah. Um, Super Ham, some guy I've never heard of. Um, <laughs> I learned about him this weekend, but I'd never heard of him. He had the second highest ever recorded vertical, which is pretty wicked. It's really, what is it, a 42? No, it was like 44 and a half. That's crazy. Like, it was insane. Um, I also learned something else about the verticals. Steph Curry recorded a 34 and a half inch vertical, which is sick. Wow. And Westbrook has a 36. What? So everyone's like, oh, Russell Westbrook. No, Steph can jump too. It's just, that's not his game. Anyway, yeah. uh, Super Ham, like, it was sweet. He dunked over Shaq and it was hard. It was aggressive. It wasn't the best dunk. Like I said earlier, LeBron's dunk was pretty dope two days later. Giannis's dunk was pretty dope two days later. Best dunk of the night went to Dennis Smith Jr. and Jay Cole. So sick. Um, Miles Bridges, nobody even knew who he was, and he was the hometown guy. His highlight was a Larry Johnson jersey. And then he brought out Muggsy Bogues. And I was hoping because, like, you know, Michael's in with Charlotte. Like, yeah. is Sean Bradley coming out? Oh. You know, Chuck's already in a booth. <laughs> is Pat Ewing in town coaching? Like, are we getting the gang back together for Space Jam 2? Like, are we doing this, boys? Uh, and lastly, I mean, J. Cole almost dunked at the end of everything. In his jeans, in his hoodie, no warm-up. Warm. Not even warm. Just sitting sidelines like, ah, oh, well, wow, I'm here. I'm like, I had my jersey on, I should dunk, right? Uh, you know, the slam dunk competition was kind of whatever. Like you're saying that J. Cole lob to DSJ was absolutely unreal. Uh, the pick would make even a more wicked poster. He just got way up there and just pulled way back for it. Uh, but, of course, that honey dip over Shaq was, I would say, the most memorable one because uh, it was pretty insane. And you had that Vince Carter with the jumping over Shaq, and he used to be Superman. You had all those different things in there, which kind of made it all right, you know. Uh, I think we're just going through a little bit of a recession ever since the 2016 slam dunk with Levine and Gordon. Uh, hopefully Donovan Mitchell and Giannis go into the competition in 2020 in Chicago. Yeah, I saw that Giannis, he tweeted about it saying like, hey fans, what do you think and should I join? Donovan Mitchell pl- replies, if you do it, I'll do it. Which yeah. is sick. sick. And then Levine and Gordon said that they might join. So imagine, hear me out. Levine, Gordon, arguably the best on competition of all time. And Levine is sporting the hometown crowd. That's right, that's right. Um... Giannis, who's just a freak of nature. Freak. A Greek freak of nature, if yeah, you will. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Donovan the Spider Mitchell. And then you gotta think Zion competes. Oh. You gotta think oh. Big Z comes in and competes. There's no way the NBA lets him say no. There's no way the NBA drafts him without a, oh, by the way, <laughs> what are you doing this time, ne- this time next year? Yeah, exactly. The three-point contest. Yes, Queen. Talk to me. Yas Queen is right, Jeez. All right, so I'm going to start off here with uh, Joe Harris. Congrats to the guy who, you know, he played hard in this league. Uh, Well, actually, he played hard to get back in the league. He was drafted by the Cavs, and where Harris spent two years and at the end of playing, at playing at the end of the bench for those Cavs. Played 51 total games for the Cavs and played 21 games in the G League affiliate in Canton. Uh, He then... Faced the worst case scenario, and in January 12 of 2016, the day that he started foot surgery, uh, he got a phone call that he got traded to the Orlando Magic. The Magic then waived Harris, and suddenly he was unemployed and had a broken foot. 
uh, he was out for like six, about six months. So you got to give him big, big props for being able to pull away with uh, the three-point competition here. I'd almost rather be unemployed than play for the Magic. I thought that was worst case scenario. <laughs> like, but there was a was a was a, uh, was a light at the end of the tunnel. He got waved. You know, like he had foot surgery. <laughs> he got waved. He was sitting at home being like, "Thank." Christ. Yeah, like Orlando's great and all, but pass. Um, realistically, Steph versus Seth in Charlotte would have been way too perfect, and luckily for everyone, Seth had no business being there. Would he throw up like a nine or something? It was so bad. No, yeah, he, he and he looked exhausted. He was gassed. At the end. I think he threw up nine. Steph hit his last nine. Like he hit his last nine in the final round to get twenty four in that final round. Buddy Heel hit 19, and he he looked good. I thought he was going to take off, actually. And who the hell is Joe Harris, the guy that got waived by Orlando? Like, who gets waived by Orlando? Orlando just got off the phone with me, offered me a 10-day contract. I'm pretty sure he's shooting, like, 47% from three this season. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, he, <laughs> I have no idea who he is, and he looks like a discount Kevin Love, but, man, he crushed that. He's crushing it. OMG. Russ has 11 triple doubles. Holy crow. Holy crow. Not even just 11 triple doubles. 11 consecutive triple doubles, Jeeves. Um, I don't have too much to say other than the guy is freaking magic. And the streak goes on. Yeah, the streak goes on. This is such an amazing feat. And that it's done by Russ, it's kind of been meh. Uh, hasn't gained all that much attention as it should have. Uh, the Thunder are 11-2 and two in their last 13 games because of the connection Russ and PG have. Uh, and then they have studs that go under the radar like Steven Adams. Uh, that's just an enforcer down low. Uh, and when Russ triple doubles, they're 9-2 and two in their last 11. Uh, it hasn't been quite Russ's year shooting. He's only 42% from the field and 25% from three. So, yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, but it just shows you how hard Russ works at every game to get the stats that he does. I guess so. But, I mean, like, he has to go get these boards because he's only shooting 25%. Well, that's a lot of offensive rebounds. That's a, yeah, that's a, <laughs> maybe he's just padding his stats. Good for him. STFU. James Harden has how many 30-point games in a row? All right, jeez, you don't need to hurt my feelings with that one. I get it. I was wrong. Whatever. Uh, I don't know when the heck this streak will end, honestly. <laughs> Actually. Uh, it seems like this is the highlight of the Rocket season, and then Tony and everyone just wants to keep riding this hardened train. Uh, will this type of basketball win in the playoffs? Gosh, no. Especially not in the Western Conference. Uh, they have the Lakers, the Warriors, Hawks, Hornets, Heat, and Celtics in their next six. Uh, he'll probably get 30 in all those games, unless the Lakers or the Warriors just make sh- sure with all their power that he does not. Um, They are the team that gets a lot of shots up, the Houston Rockets are, uh, so they can beat any team and have a chance against any team out there, but not against those Warriors. Choo-choo! Me and D'Antoni are riding the Harden train. Like you said earlier, man, I mean, the next six games, I've got them here in front of me too, are Lakers, Warriors, Hawks, Hornets, Heat, and Celtics. I think the streak ends at a bajillion games, yeah. but it might be the back-to-back with Charlotte, then Miami, um, and I'm not saying it for other than it's a back-to-back, yeah. and or a stingy Celtics defense that could be enough to do the trick, but the Celtics game, he has like a four-day break. So yes, they are the best defense out of the next six, but he's going to be so rested. And when, you, when, you, when he pops, like, 25 threes in a game. Well, and that's the thing. That's D'Antoni's offense. D'Antoni wants you to go to the free throw line, which he has no problem doing, or shoot threes. He yep. wants high percentage shots at, a la the free throw line, or shots that if you're going to be making 35 or 40% from the field, shoot that shoot that shot for an extra point, right? That's so right. Hard, Harden has no problem jacking up double-digit oh, threes. Gosh, no. He's got no problem going to the line 14 times a game. <sighs> That's his. That's his. That's his mo. It'll stop when he when he wants it to stop. Real recognize real. LeBron only needs two hundred and ten points to surpass Michael. Damn. Uh, this this is gonna be this is gonna be a big segment for us since I'm a big MJ lover and uh, your boy Robbie Sims is a big LeBron lover. So here we go. Uh, big congrats to LeBron. On this, uh, but it, I'm going to say it comes with a big asterisk Boo. because I know 
all the LeBron lovers will throw this at all the MJ fans for, oh, he's the GOAT. Oh, see, he's the GOAT. I don't know what sound GOATs uh, make. So but, but... I'm just going to, let's just look at the stats. So MJ. That's when, not what this is about. Listen, I'm going to throw something in your face here. MJ, 1,072 games played. 1,039 of those were started. Average 30.1 points per game, all right? LeBron is at 1,182 games played, 1,181 started, has averaged 27.1, all right? If you have Jordan play the same amount of games as LeBron has with, the, his, with his current average for his whole career, that's an extra 3,311 points, and that would put MJ at 35,603, uh, which would be good for second all-time. But I know that you hate this kind of stuff, so I'm going to do some more of it. Oh, okay. Uh, in 1993, 1994, MJ was suspended for gambling, uh, but he retired instead. So we'll keep that season as it is. No, let's talk no. about gambling and retirement. No, that, hey, that's why I'm not... Listen. LeBron never has to retire because he doesn't gamble. Yeah. He's not a degen. He's not a degenerate. Baldy. Baldy! <laughs> He's not a DJ. He he was such a competitor. He oh didn't my lose in god! Anything. Yeah, I he was, was right. an assassin. His batting average is like two ten. Saying about baseball. Baseball. <laughs> Get this guy a fly swatter. He is so bad. Did you not watch Space Jam? When you strike up, Mike, it looks real good, Mike. <laughs> they had to redo Space Jam with LeBron. Space Jam too. That's because LeBron wants to ride on his coattails. That's because they're just like, wow, we can do so much better. All right. Anyways, back to the storyline here. Uh, so he was retired from 98 to 2001, but he was in the prime of his career and could have won more rings. Uh, let's say we take that t- retirement out. And in 98, 99, let's say he averaged 27 a game. Since the year prior, he averaged 28.7 at the age of 34. Then in 99, 2000, we'll give him 25 a game, 2000, 2001, 24 a game, which is reasonable because in 2000. 1-2002 and 2002-2003, he averaged 22.9 and 20 a game. Uh, so, if you add all those numbers up uh, in the three seasons, well, and you know what? Instead of 82 games, we'll give him 65 games a season, uh, which makes sense because 8 out of Jordan's 15 seasons, he played eighty two ga- all 82 games. So, after the end of those three seasons, you're looking at 4,940 points. Uh, which would put him still at second all time, uh, but however, LeBron is in my top three all time. MJ is just still the goat. Uh, congrats to LeBron on this cool feat, and you know what? Because he is committed to his body, he doesn't smoke cigars, he doesn't gamble, and gamble like Mike, and is up into the late morning gambling. LeBron, with that longevity, is why he's here. But he's amazing. I'll give you that. Your floor. Okay, first of all, I can't imagine too many of our, of our listeners go to MIT and we're computing all of that. So thanks for doing it for us. All I heard was... In, Shout out MIT. All I heard was 1,000, blah, 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 points, 4,000. That was all garbage. Uh, this segment is LeBron only needs 210 points to surpass MJ. That's... Nope. In 10 games, the Lakers play the Bulls. Cool. MJ has to congratulate him. I'm not... like yeah, he will. Le- LeBron... I don't know if he will. He's been sending Scottie Pippen around town trying to tell everybody, like, no, no, man, make sure they tell, tell him that MJ's the greatest. Like, there's no way that Scottie Pippen is all, like, fired up for no reason. MJ's on him Scottie right now. Scottie works on the jump now. He just wants to be a journalist with hot takes. Please. Um... LeBron is going to need less than 10 games. I think it would be awesome if he did it in Chicago. He won't have to do it in Chicago. MJ has to congratulate him, and I think he has to do it in person. I don't think it can be a tweet or a... Because that's not his thing. I think MJ needs to fly to wherever LeBron is and shake his hand. Jesus. Well, you, do you think of this is like a passing of some kind of goat torch? Um... Or like what? Yeah, yeah, that's what you I wanted. Think, I think LeBron's been the goat for a long, long time. A long time. Okay, why? Because he's the goat. No way. Which buyout player will be most significant? I'll take this one right here. Markeith Morris. Thunder. They need a tough guy. Let Stephen Adams breathe, would ya? Guy plays hard down low. Guy's from New Zealand. Guy's one of thirteen siblings. He's the youngest. He's a rock. Like eleven of the thirteen are. Taller than seven foot. That's well. His sister is the world discus champion. Of course. Because she looks exactly like him. 
<laughs> Bigger beard, though. Bigger beard. Yeah, more tatties. Um, yeah, they need another tough guy. Let let the big guy rest. They're already third in the West. They're two games back from Denver, four games back from the Warriors, and neither of those other two teams did anything. Yeah. So they're the only, to me, like real contender in the West that got better. Yeah, and you know, part of me would really love to say Carmelo Anthony once the Lakers do sign him, uh, since they did strike out on Markeith Morris and Ennis Cantor. Uh, I do have to say as well, Markeith Morris it was the best uh, signing with the Thunder. Guy's a strong defender. Uh, he can guard plenty of positions. He just improves the Thunder in their next step into the playoffs. But just because you chose him, I'm going to choose Ennis Cantor. Because uh, he just presents another big body for those Portland Trailblazers. Uh, gets the, he get, get get after rebounds, and he's a pretty good defender as well. I was thinking Ennis Cantor, but I just don't think it's enough to compete with the Warriors. And I think Markeith Morris might be enough to compete with the Warriors. But I was considering Cantor. I can't believe people think we have sponsors. But mom, you know I hate babysitting. Ugh, whatever. I'm just going to listen to Possession on a podcast anyway. That was whack. But it's time for Spill the Beans. The beans are spilling. Catch the beans because they're spilling everywhere. Oh, catch the beans, they're spilling. Oh my god. So for those who don't know, this is Spill the Beans. This is where we use one word, one phrase to kind of just sum up like a scenario or or just a person. The All-Star Break benefited blank the most. Uh, Jeeves, I'm going to say the All-Star Break benefited the Lakers the most. Uh, This gives LeBron the perfect opportunity to convince the guys to come play with them without the worry of tampering. And I, that's what I'm talking about is during this All-Star break, he got to talk to Kyrie. He got to talk to AD. He got to talk to all his boys uh, without worrying about the NBA hovering around. And, you know, since Magic couldn't get the deal done for the deadline, LeBron will do what LeBron has to do uh, to get what he wants in the offseason. Yeah, I was going to go with LeBron, but I guess I'll just switch it up to my other boyfriend, James Harden. He had a shoulder injury yep. at 31 30-point consecutive games, and now he's healthy. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out, yeah. I mean, it was definitely LeBron, though. Yeah. He's out there recruiting. Luca's effort in the skills competition was blank. Uh, Dodge's effort in the skills comp was lackluster. Uh, he seemed to be just playing it to play. Running around like Dirk did in the All-Star game and just <laughs> heaving half-court bombs. Uh, I guess he just wanted to put on a jersey and be say he was a part of the weekend. Yeah, they both kind of run like the Geico caveman. Just yeah. like, you know, like <laughs> ne- real you know Neanderthals. Geico can save you 15% of car insurance. Shout out Geico. Um, yeah, for me, I mean, Luca's effort was unfair. Think of all the kids who were so excited to see Luca. you know, and he's just there with a goofy like why am i here smile like if you don't want to be there man you don't have to go because there's another young kid who would love to be in this game so i think it was super unfair to the nba to his fans the only person that benefited was the dallas mavs so the slam dunk contest was blank embarrassing like yeah good word so many like what the heck it took dennis smith jr like what 39 tries to dunk a ball yeah like um, it was you know, like that Nate Robinson one. Took took Nate fourteen times, and I bet you it took DSJ like six. Like yeah. it was so bad on both attempts. Like it was really bad. Um, he kind of just got like voted into the final because people know what he can do, but he still didn't do it. Something else like John Simmons showing up with like putting a biplane in the middle and then kicking it around the John gym. Collins. John Collins, yeah, kicking it around the gym. He destroyed half of the place. It was so bad. He was the most... Imb- I And he's a high flyer. He's 6'10". Like, in that last year's World uh, versus US game where Donovan Mitchell just throws it up behind him and he catches it from way far back and he just crams it. He's no LeBron D-Wade, but... No, but it was still pretty wicked. And then he goes out and puts that plane out and kicks half of it. Yeah, he put up like a 37 in the first one. It was and so bad. And he was bad. pissed. He was like, come he was on. like, 37, <laughs> what? Like, yeah, all right, like, cool, you grab the backboard. Like, you're six foot ten. Yeah. I don't know, I was not was not impressed. No, and it was just all right. Nothing to write home about. 
I'm glad I only watched the highlights because uh, there was two dunks that I liked, and the the guy that I picked to win didn't even care uh, to even be there. Uh, let's just hope 2020 brings brings better times. Fingers crossed for Levine and Gordon Part Two. Well, yeah, and this was the first year where I tried to get my girlfriend like involved in not the good year. Yeah, and I was like, oh come on, like you know, like we can watch the slam dunk, like it's cool, like they slam a jam on, you know, they throw yeah. it down super hard, and she's like. I'm going to go downstairs and shower. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, you know what? Like, I don't blame you. Like, ugh. Three-point champion Joe Harris is blank. Three-point champion Joe Harris is pretty cool. Oh, my God. Uh, work. He works hard. His hard work paid off. That was hard to say. That was, that was a little tongue twister <laughs> right there. Uh, the Cavs thought he was nothing. Uh, and usually when you're traded just to be waived, that's not a very good sign. The Nets took a chance on this guy because, I mean, they had no picks ever since that trade with the Celtics, so might as well. Like, oh, his foot's new. (laughs) He's bionic. Sign him. (laughs) Uh, Now he's hitting threes at 47% clip, and uh, it's only going to continue. Yeah, to me, he's just a role guy. Like, he started every game, don't get me wrong, and he's shooting it super well, but he's only averaging 16 points and he's up every single season since he's been in Brooklyn, 13, then 15, then 16. But he's just a role guy. If he's lucky, he can carve out a role like Korver. Um, but he's certainly not Reggie Miller. You know, like, no. he's going to be a guy that plays 25 minutes and hopefully he goes five from Get six. From yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Another commercial break and then the weekly recap of Zion. While riding a shark, while wrestling a chimp, while skipping rocks with a rhino. Because I listen to the Possession Arrow podcast every Wednesday. You know, that guy has at least 10 hundred girlfriends. And when I say 10 hundred, I do not mean a thousand. Easily. Um, yeah, NCAA update. So as predicted, the top five had a huge shift this week. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, Duke is number one. Duke's R.J. Barrett notched the school's fourth triple-double in school history, which is insane. R.J. dropped 23, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists against NC State, while Zion casually chipped in 32. The Blue Devils didn't do anything special, but former number one Tennessee, they lost on the road to Kentucky, and that was enough to dethrone them. Tennessee will have an opportunity to climb back in the hunt with the next few matchups, though with these Games, I mean, it's LSU number 13 on Saturday and then Kentucky at home on the second. So they do have the opportunity, but outlook not so great. University of Virginia beat Virginia Tech 64-58 on the road in another good game between the in-state rivals. And it was good enough to keep them in the three spot. So the top five rounds out as Duke, Gonzaga, Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee at number five. So it's definitely going going to be fun to watch from here on out. I wonder what I'm going to do at school today. Um, hmm. All right. Here's a new episode of Possession Era Podcast. School is going to be great. Possession Era Podcast is only the second best sports podcast on the air today. Man, have a Snickers. What? Because you dumb as hell when you don't have your Snickers. Possession Era Podcast number one. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Possession R is number one. On this week's episode of Whatever Happened to Darko Milicic. Jeez, for a British guy, you crushed that name right there. He gets Milicic's. <laughs> well, you know, when you think of a famous 2003 NBA draft, you can think of guys like Robbie's boyfriend, LeBron James. LeBron. Robbie's other boyfriend, Dwayne Wade. D. Wade. Carmelo Anthony. I've got a lot of boyfriends. And Chris Bosch. The Boschinator. You don't think of Darko, who was drafted number two right after LeBron. Even 16 years later, I'm left thinking to myself, why did Joe Dumars draft him number, o- n- number two overall over guys like I mentioned before? On top of it all, Detroit won the championship... <laughs> The following year in 2004. Darko has a ring. Darko has a ring. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, So Darko, after being drafted number two overall by the Pistons, played for them from 2003 to 2006. 
Uh, Joe Dumars repeatedly said that Milicic would be a big part of the organization going forward. Darko's best year came in 05-06, where he averaged 4.8 points per game, 2.7 rebounds, and a .7 assist per game in 13 minutes of action. Uh, per 36 minutes, his numbers would be 12.5 points, 7.1 rebounds, and 1.9 assists. So there was something there, but really not something for a number two overall pick. On February 15, 2006, just prior to the NBA's All-Star break, Darko was traded, along with point guard Carlos Arroyo, which I know you remember. I do remember Arroyo. <laughs> right? The, the little Spaniard. Yeah. Uh, they were traded to the Orlando Magic for Kevin Cato, or, yeah, Kel- Kelvin. My apologies, Kelvin. Sorry, Kel. Uh, Kelvin Cato, and, the, and a first-round pick in 2007 NBA draft, which became Ronnie Stuckey, which... Hey, not bad. Hey, not bad. Better, I'm a better than Darko. Heck yeah. Uh, as a member of the Magic, Darko averaged 7.6 points, 4.1 rebounds, and 8 points and 5.5 rebounds. But while playing behind high school phenom Dwight Howard, Darko didn't have much room for growth. And the Magic sent him packing. Uh, when his rookie contract expired in the offseason, Orlando GM Otis Smith did not resign him. Uh, or sorry, they did not match the offer on the table, so he became an unrestricted free agent. Uh, then, on July 12, 2007, the first day of free agency, Darko was signed by the Memphis Grizzlies to a three-year, twenty-one million what? Yeah, <laughs> dollar contract. Uh, Darko would hurt his Achilles tendon practicing with a Serbian national team, and in two thousand and then the two thousand eight off season. Uh, was unavailable to start for the beginning of the season. Uh, Milicic began in the, began in the 8 9 season, starting at power four, but due to poor play, was moved to the bench. Then, another trade happened. Uh, June 25th, 2009, he was traded to the New York Knickerbockers for Quinton Richardson and some cash money money. Uh, and then, on February 17, 2010, Milicic was traded to the T-Wolves, along with some more cash money money, for Brian Cardinal, who who wouldn't want Brian Cardinal. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, to everybody's surprise, the Timberwolves agreed to re-sign Milicic for a four-year, $20 million contract. What? This guy's making <laughs> money hand over fist. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but then, you know, Darko year averaging 8.8 points and 5.2 rebounds. And a big two blocks per game. That really surprised me that a guy was getting two blocks a game in a, in a season. Uh, on July 12th in 2012, Darko was waived by the Teddy Wolves uh, by the league's amnesty clause. And then in September of 2012, he was signed with the Boston Celtics. However, on November 21st of the same year, the Celtics released Darko at his request so that he could attend a personal matter. He spent only one month with the Celtics and played only five minutes. So, you know, get that jersey. Uh, in June of 2013, he officially re- announced his retirement. Uh, in his post-basketball playing days, he has pursued a career in kickboxing, where uh, he lost his very first official debut fight, uh, and he got, had a second-round TKO. <laughs> that had to him. Like, he lost. Kind of like his career, yeah. Kind of, right? Uh, he's pretty happy now. Darko has pursued farming. I was going to say, I thought he was a farmer. Yeah. yeah, as of August of 2017, he owned and operated an apple orchard of about 125 acres. And he plans to purchase more land and also grow some cherries. Well, he only made like $70 million. Like, Okay, a couple of things here. One, you got to assume the amnesty clause was built for Milicic. Definitely. Like, I remember it, Ron Artest being the big guy they were trying. I think it was Meta World Peace at the time. That they were trying to, the Lakers were trying to get yeah. out of his contract, and I honestly thought Milicic played for the Pacers for three years, and that was it. I had no idea he floated like this. Yeah, no, he he was he was bouncing around because you know people thought there was something to him being a number two, but Joe Dumars just they fudged it up. No kidding. Shout he, out Joe. Shout out Joe. Shout out Michael Beasley, also a number two floating around the oh, league. Oh man, and yeah, now in China. Currently in China with the Guangdong Southern Tigers. Well, you know, as we're talking about international basketball, did you hear that uh, they're opening up an African league? I did, in, in Africa. In 2020. How'd you know? <laughs> well, it's... Insider information. Yeah, no, 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 no. While we're also talking about the Guangdong Southern Tigers, Marshawn Brooks went there, too. Oh! Yeah, about an hour later. 
Nah, yeah. t- same team, right? Same team. Yeah. Guangdong. I don't know if you were saying the team or the city. No, no, something must be Guan right about the team if they're all going there. More commercials. Got to pay the bills somehow, baby. Yeah, maybe there's an all star break, but that doesn't mean you need to take a break from Possession Arrow Podcast. New episodes every Wednesday. Hello, mate. It's me, Ben Simmons of the Philadelphia 76ers. You're listening to Possession Arrow Podcast. I reckon it's a good one. Thanks again, Ben. Appreciate wow. the shout out, buddy. Ben Simmons? I told you, man. I've got connects. <sighs> Wednesday night. No wait. Thursday night, money makers. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ring the alarm. <laughs> oh, yes. So Pat's sitting at 13 and 5, and I'm 12 and 6. We're just here printing money. Chicka, chicka, chicka. Wait. <laughs> yeah, mine was a trade. Here's the money, <laughs> money counter. <laughs> All right, let's hop right to it. Phoenix, Cleveland. Who you got? I got Phoenix. Give me Phoenix. Miami, Philly. 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 Yeah. After Ben Simmons just gives us a I, shout you out. You gotta like hook that. up, gotta Ben. Go, like, D Wade knows he's my guy, but Ben, thanks again, man. No doubt. I reckon it'll be a good one. Um, Portland, Brooklyn. Good game. Going Portland. Going Portland. All right. Boston, Milwaukee. Another good game. Going Bucks. Going Bucks. Kings, Warriors. Course, Warriors. Warriors. Oh my gosh, Kate. <laughs> this is, I think, where we might differ. Houston Lakers. I'm going Lakers. I'm going Houston. Hey! hey. <laughs> Come on, Bron. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Prove your boy Ron here. Well, and that's the thing. Like, I want Bron to throw up 40 points, but I need James Harden to throw down 100. So. Seven so Anyways, we're going to make you some money. That's what we do around That's what here. we do. 12 and 6. Not only are we entertaining. We we'll give you a dollar dollar bills. We printing bills. That's us. Um, I'm Robbie. And I'm Patty. See ya. Bye bye.